There's only so far you can get with Python before you realise that the command line is pretty boring and you hanker for something with graphical um, elements like colours and buttons and pictures. What you need, my friend, is a graphical user interface or GUI. There's a variety of GUIs available to Python and the one that comes as standard is one called Takinta, which is a library that's already baked into your current install of Python. You might have used Takinta before when you've used things like the Turtle module because that's what it's based on. However, trying to get Takinta to use Takinta to design a graphical user interface with buttons and fields and um, text boxes and things like that is quite tricky because it never tends to appear where you think uh, the elements are going to appear. It's a little bit hit and miss. And what I was looking for was some kind of drag and drop designer to allow me to design um, a graphical user interface without having to know exactly how to uh, do it into Kinta. And then I can just hook into it and use the buttons and the text boxes to actually write my algorithms. Now, those of you who are thinking of doing um, Python for, their, for your projects, your A-level projects, you will need some kind of graphical user interface. Now, I've traditionally taught people to do it using either a uh, web-based form, which, um, you can either use you know, um, PHP and HTML together for that, or more recently using Flask with um, Python. But I discovered this um, new neat trick to allow you to create your own, your own graphical user interfaces. Um, so what I was doing, I will just show you my screen so you can see it. What I was doing previously was Googling um, the five best Python drag and drop GUI builders. So as I scroll down through this, this is quite an interesting one. Um, it mentions this one called the Pi QT Framework Designer, which I've heard people mention before, um, which I might I might investigate later on. Uh, there's also this one called the Wix or WX Form Builder, which is a similar sort of thing. What I was aiming for was something uh, like in Visual Studio when you're using Visual Basic. You can drag and drop elements and, and plop them onto a, a screen and have buttons and text boxes where you, where you drag them. So far, so good. But then I found this, which is called Takinta Designer. And the thing that got me excited was the fact that it was using this thing called Figma. Now, Figma is a website, a free to use website. It does have a pricing plan if you want to use it more um, intensely but it's free to sign up for, and it allows you to create your own graphical user interfaces that way. Now, I'm always intrigued how Python can be used with some of the more webby elements, and so I read on. Now, the actual, um, the actual code can be found at this GitHub address. So if I just go to the GitHub address, which I've still got up here, um, and scroll back up to the top, it's basically, Got the instructions on how to get it set up so assuming you've got um, python installed you then need to install this library called takinta designer and then you need to make a figma account let me just show you what figma looks like to start with so here's one i prepared earlier and uh, this is a way to create a nice form okay um, if i let's create a brand new one shall we let me just create a brand new project so if i go back to files and let's create a brand new project. There we go, now that's team. I do know, here we go, design file. So if I create a new design file, I don't know lots about Figma and I'm sure there'll be lots of you out there who know much, much more than me. But say I wanted to design a simple form, I would create a frame. So I can choose how big my frame is gonna be. This is effectively the same as your window. And then you can put various blocks onto it. So I can draw a block here. So say this is going to be um, where someone enters some information. Then I can also add some text to say, uh, enter your password, for example. I don't know. Um, and then you can drag it around. This is, what, this is what I was looking for. The idea that you can actually make your interfaces look quite nice. Uh, and then let's say I want to add a button. Now you'll notice there isn't actually a button here, but the way we can do that is create, I'm just gonna make, make a big fat button there. I can on the right hand side, choose a different color. So let's make a big fat red button. And then if I want to add some text onto it, I can draw some text and I'm gonna call it login. 
and you can make it a bit bigger again down here and you can do things like design and make it align there we go that looks pretty good now how we name these elements is how this module will import um, import it into Tikinta. So firstly, if I want this gray box here to be a text box, I need to right click, choose rename and call it text box. OK, it, the te actual text that's just labels on the form I can leave. But for something like this rectangle and this login, what I want to do is group these together. Now, I should be able to select both of them, right click and choose group selection. OK, so works the same as in like Photoshop or um, like, you know, Word and um, PowerPoint that allows you to group elements. But if I want this to be a button, I have to name, rename the group and call it button. OK, uh, you can also add some nice pictures as well. So if I always find these cute cartoon kittens, Let's pick this one here. No, let's have one like this is a cute cartoon kitten. I would obviously credit this if I was going to be using this seriously, but I'm just going to put it on here. There's my cute cartoon kitten. You can also do cool things like round the edges. This is what I'm enjoying doing by clicking on those borders there. And if I want to change the whole picture, I'm sorry, the whole background of my form, I can click the fill on the right hand side. I can even use the eyedropper and then pick a color. I like that gray color, there we go. So I've really quickly knocked up a form, but at the moment it is just a, um, it's just a uh, Figma, um, Figma project. So it's not any way connected to Python at all. What I will need to do is go up to share and copy the link okay so this is a link to this project all right and if i just paste it into a new tab so you can see what it looks like there's my link to my project up at the top there right what do we do next so if i go back to how to use Tikinta designer and scroll down so assuming you've already got python installed i'm going to ignore step one for installing Tikinta designer you can either use pip or you can use this poetry method or you can um, just clone the git uh, repo and cd into the drive and then install the requirements okay either of those three methods will work don't don't know what i did sorry don't do what i did and um, do try and do all three because it gets very confusing all right then you need to make a figma account so go go and sign up verify your email create a design file and then start making your your graphical user interface. Now this table here shows you the different types of naming. So we could, um, as if we name things button, it will appear as a button. If we name it as a line, it'll appear as a line. Text can be named anything, so you don't need to worry about that. You can also copy over rectangles, text areas, text boxes and images, okay? I haven't done all of them, but you can try that. So you need to name them these things on the left here for them to be pulled over into Tikinta. Then uh, there's lots of interesting uh, things about how you can do it in Figma. I'm scrolling down. How do we actually use it? Right. So you'll need to grab hold of your personal access token. This can be found in your Figma account. Go to the little Figma icon top left. Go to your account settings and then scroll down and there's personal access token. You give it a description and it gives you a long number. OK. Um, I've already created one, I called it Tikinta there. Um, you can create, I presume, as many as you want, but you'll get a long um, base64 string that you need to copy and save somewhere. Okay. The other thing is to get that uh, link that I copied there. There's my link up, up at the top there. Then, uh, so personal access token, your file URL, and then you use the command line interface. So what we want to do is spin up our command line interface not that one this one here and the the actual url is sorry the actual command is tk designer i'm typing it in here then we want to use the url for our file and then we want to use our personal access token which i've copied somewhere here so i don't have to remember it it's up here somewhere 
Oh, so much Python. Here we go. There's my personal URL. So I'm copying that and then going back here and right clicking it. When I run it, I should get success. There we go. And it will start to, to go through. We put a text box. We had a bit of text saying enter your password, a button, image one. Ooh, the element with name image one cannot be parsed. Will be displaced. Ah, because if I go back to my lovely little picture of the cat here, I did not rename my image. Not to, not a problem. No, no big deal. I can just call it image and then try again. So if I go back to my command line and press the up arrow and it will run it again. Now it says that the build already exists. I didn't show you the folder, but um, let's just, we'll look at that in a second. If I say I want to overwrite it, hopefully I won't get that error again. Okay, so same sort of thing. It's got a text box, it's got my enter your password, it's got a button and it's got an image. There we go, project successfully generated. So no errors there. If I go here, there's my build folder. So if I open up my build folder, oops. If I open up my build folder, there we go. You've got a folder called assets. If I just have a look in there, there we go. There's my button, there's my text box background and there's my image with the circle um, background, which is nice. And then if we look in the GUI.py, I'll just edit it with idle here. There we go. Um, it's generated some decent looking Python. Okay. The thing I liked about this is um, if I just run it, I was genuinely shocked when this actually worked. Look, it doesn't look exactly the same, but it's pretty darn close. This works as a text box. This works as a button and I've even got some code running. So it actually works as a button click. So you could add all sorts of exciting things to this in order to make your um, your Python interface much more interesting. OK, uh, I'm also going to show you one I created earlier just because I was rather, rather pleased with my <laughs> work on it. Just to show, is it this one here? Yes, I think it is. Let's try this one. So if I overwrite this, make sure I've got it. Yeah. Oh, hello. Here we go. So this one had a little bit more in it, a few more um, text areas and, and buttons and things like that. So we'll see whether this works. All right, so it's just overwritten the one I've done before. So if I oops, open that with idle, why is this not working? And have a look at the code here and I'll just run it to show you. There we go. Oh, this is a calculator. So if I add two numbers, I think. Uh, oh, why is my, <laughs> my code isn't working? Oh, it's because, <laughs> it's because I re um, I re I re wrote over it, didn't I? I have got the code for it somewhere, but you can kind of see how you can make a much more interesting interface by uh, generating using this to Kinter Designer. So, what I want to just say in in um, conclusion is uh, it's a really nice way of spinning up a nice um, user interface. To Kinter Designer, go and install it, play around with it, play around with Figma. You should be able to create some really nice looking interfaces. I might do another video on how I actually did get that Python calculator to work and I will see you soon.